It is freaking hot in here, dude. Oh, I am so sweaty right now. I just took a shower and now it's um, it's freaking hot. And now I'm <laughs> moist. Bringing back old school spunky for this one. I was playing with my color settings in the camera and now I look like orange. And the shirt is like blinding. Uh, editing Ben, green screen something funny. This video is the biggest load of hoo-ha I've ever seen. Thank you. Have you ever had the urge the desire, I dare say, to watch an awful movie about beans with guns. I know I have not, but if you said yes, you're in luck because we're going to be talking about Killer Beans Forever. If you have not heard of Killer Beans Forever, yeah, I'm not surprised. It was a really low budget movie from like, 2009. The way I found it was there's a certain scene right at the beginning, which you will soon see. It was in a meme video, and I thought it was hilarious. And the rest is history. The producer, Jeff Liu. Come on, Jeff. Like. All right, let's get into it. So the opening scene, it's some some beans in a in a warehouse. So these beans are getting funky to some extremely repetitive EDM music that sounds like it should be in a low budget 80s film. I mean, that's good and all, but this was made in 2009. Oh yeah, I forgot to add, they're dancing at 2.43 in the morning. So the dancing beans get a call from this guy and he's pissed because they're dancing to music <laughs> in the wee hours of the night. Yeah? Can you turn down the music? I'm trying to get some sleep here. Turn down the music? Turn down your damn music or I'll come over there and turn it down myself. And he basically says, I'm trying to sleep, turn down your music or I'll turn it down for you. And Mr. DJ Bean is like, nah. And the, the DJ Bean pulls the ultimate little brother move and, and turns up that dial. He turns up the volume. And after he does that, not even 10 seconds later, a car busts through the door and mows down the beans that are dancing. introduced to a new bean and he's the protagonist if you want to call him that it's a freaking acid trip it does not follow a plot at all most movies follow a pattern like hero's journey or something like that it's like they put a hat <laughs> and they had events and they're like okay <laughs> okay and it sounds like a 10 year old wrote this so the new bean bumps out, jumps out of his car and delivers the worst one-liner i have ever heard in my entire life in any movie ever. When I don't get enough sleep, I get irritable. And you don't want to make me- And then more beans show up. And they have guns. So there's a fight scene breaks out, of course. One thing I found funny was like, in the like in the middle of all this, there's this one bean who who shows up with a shotgun, and he's like across the entire room, and he tries and he tries to shoot Ninja Bean, and as you can expect, nothing happens. The scene ends when the Ninja Bean throws a grenade and blows up the guy, last guy. Just kidding. DJ Bean is still alive. So DJ Bean turns out he is the nephew of the main mob boss, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Editing Ben. Okay. Awesome. So DJ Bean is being held at gunpoint by Ninja Bean. And DJ Bean is like, Who are you? And once again, Ninja Bean drops another awful one-liner. Just a bean trying to get some sleep. I am just a bean trying to get some sleep. I did not make that up. This outfit is almost as ridiculous as the one-liners in this movie. Okay, so the next scene, it's like immediately after the shootout. Okay, so there's a cop chilling outside. Like a singular cop, not even inside, he's just waiting. And another guy pulls up. 
gets out of the car, and he's very clearly a detective because he's got the hat and the trench coat. Detective Cromwell, good morning. Yeah. I find it funny that the backup is a detective and, and not more police. And I think the most ridiculous part about this is the detective, the backup, pulls out a six-shooter revolver like with six bullets. The detective, using his insane detective skills, finds a bullet shell, a bullet casing from a bullet, from a gun, with the killer being the name on it. Take the crime well. I found something here. And he's like, I found a clue. Anyone who knows how to read can be a detective with this logic. And then another car pulls up and he parks. Emphasis on parks. Why do I put emphasis on parks? Because this genius cop tells the parked car to stop. Stop! Stop right there! This is the police! Hold it right there! So the guy who pulled up, his name is Ve Vagen, Vagen, whatever the frick again. So he wakes up to sirens. The hell is going on out there? And they're he lives down the street from the warehouse. He can see it from his bedroom window. And this killer being dude is an idiot, okay? He sees cops, so what does he do? He pulls out his his sniper rifle and is about to kill some random dude that he's never seen before until he gets interrupted by a phone call. The phone call is from his boss. Just wanna, <laughs> I just needed to put that out there. And then, Suddenly, we are in China. Yup. So there's another assassin bean who's a called to town, and he leaves without paying, and rightfully, the, the cook at the restaurant is upset, and he's like, you have to pay for this. Normal response would be, oh, my bad, dude. Here's money. But no, this bean beats the crap out of the, the cook and then he's like you can you can eat here for free anytime you have been activated i'm a long way from bean town wait are you leaving yes i have something i want to give to you here it's the bill you haven't paid in three months i'm leaving now hey you get back here and pay now chintao get out here Hi. He say your food tastes like crack. What? Make bean curd out of him. Yo! <laughs> so basically, the whole point of the scene was a new be a new assassin bean is called to Bean Town, and we're just we're just gonna call him China Bean for now. And it, you'll see why, you'll see he comes in later in the movie. It's honestly so all over the place. So now we're in the, the mob boss's office building in a bean board meeting. Looking at the figures from our previous fiscal year, narcotic sales have dropped 57%. 57%. That's more than half. You see, it's easy when you think about it. Crime is on the rise, okay? Some more guns sell, because criminals use guns. Hello? They also use drugs. Some more drugs should sell, right? What's the problem here? And I would like to point out, that is not how supply and demand works. The gang bean is mad because drugs are down 50%. Why are they down 50%? Anti-drug commercials. <laughs> It's all those anti-drug commercials on TV. You never see any anti-gun commercials. It's not fair. And for some reason, the three main profits for the gang is drugs, guns, or weapons, and eggs. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, I can't tell if the writers were trying to be funny or not when they talked about selling guns illegally. That bean is nothing but a kiss-ass brown loser. What does he know that we don't know? But he's making millions of dollars selling weapons. If you ask me, he's doing something illegal. 
like I'm genuinely stumped, but it shows how it just goes to show how bad this movie is. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. This whole movie sucks. It is so bad and it is excruciatingly painful to watch. So I'm going to sum it up for you and it's going to sound like I made it up or a 10 year old made it up. But I can assure you, I did not make this up. This is actually a movie. This is in the movie. I'm just look at my notes here killer bean finds another warehouse that belongs to cappuccino which is the gang bean kills everybody gets kidnapped by sunglasses guy which is the guy from earlier that pulled up on the, the cop and the detective cappuccino interrogates him cappuccino is the gang bean the main gang bean the king pit the kingpin of beans and then nobody could see this coming killer bean escapes the only part of this movie that seems like it could have been in an actual movie is when we find out that the killer bean who we know has been hired uh, been hired as an assassin to kill somebody we don't know who isn't actually trying to kill cappuccino the gang bean he's actually trying to kill vegan vague vagan sunglasses dude and that's and that's where that's where the actually good writing ends because we are now introduced to an entirely new plot line about the shadow agency about like spy beans we're like halfway through the movie and this just happens turns out vegan actually isn't vegan he is the dark bean and he betrayed the shadow agency killer bean is also part of it and dark bean betrayed the shadow agency by stealing a database like the entire database as if you can like hold a database like like a usb so he stole he stole his database and we have no clue why what were, or what was on it he just we just know he stole a database that is probably the size of a thumb drive so this part is just completely dumb cappuccino finds out that vegan isn't who he says he is and tries to fire him from the mob and i'm not i'm not a mob boss or i'm not gonna pretend to know anything about being a mob boss but i'm pretty sure mob bosses don't just fire people that lie i'm pretty sure they just take the kneecaps <laughs> i'm pretty sure they just you know so after dark bean or vegan kills cappuccino killer bean kills dark bean and then gets arrested, rightfully. <laughs> Stop your guns! Not exactly what I had in mind. And then Asian Bean shows up, kicks a cop, and gets arrested. Who are you? Let me put it in a language you can understand. Oh, so sorry. No charm in here. You deliver. Wrong place. Get your hands in the air. Put them up now. Escapes and kills everybody. Oh! Somebody! Oh! He needs no. some milk! Or Asian Bean finds Killer Bean locked up, and then Killer Bean. Surprise, surprise, he kills Asian Bean. It turns out that Asian Bean was part of the Shadow Society or whatever the frick. Like, big surprise. It's This seems like it'd be the climax of the movie. So they, they reach the climax. So they go up. And then the movie ends. It ends with... This is so stupid. So, Killer Bean takes Asian Bean's phone and calls his boss. What the frick? Killer Bean's like, oh, I'm coming to kill you. It's getting old, Killer Bean. Why don't you like get a hobby like gardening or something? So he's like, yo, dude, I'm gonna kill you. And then he goes to like a police van and starts taking weapons. And then that's where the movie ends. Why don't you come in? We can talk things over. Oh, I'm coming in. 
but it won't be for talking. The movie ends on a cliffhanger, as if we wanted a second movie, and to my knowledge, there is more than one follow-up movie. <sighs> I... Ah! That was probably the most excruciating 85 minutes of my life. It, it was bad for so many reasons, but like, I think the animation was, it was very lazy. It was a really interesting animation style because everything looked shiny. I can tell there was effort put into it, but you can tell that there was like three dudes that animated the whole thing, which that that's what happens when you have less than a million dollars to fund a movie. Yeah, it was, this was awful. It was an awful movie. I'd never want to watch it again. But if I get 100 likes, I will make another one on the sequel. Killer Bean Returns. <laughs> yeah, it was honestly a train wreck. Like, I mean, the voice, the voice acting. I mean, it sounded nice. They had good mics. Awful. I want to drink bleach. <laughs>